Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. A few months ago, I take a swab sample from my bathroom because I'm looking for bacteria that I want to add into my collection. I end up isolating five bacteria as you see here. All of them look interesting and very different from each other. So now what? Well, I want to know what species of bacteria I got, at least what genome it is. So I plan to run some tests on those bacteria, some old fashioned biochemical tests. It actually took me a long time to gather the material, make all the test medium and conduct the test, plus my procrastination. And that's the main reason why this video took so long. Here I write down all the test result. I did the test multiple times, so I'm pretty sure about the result. So I have a total of eight tests that can help me identify the bacteria I have. And how am I going to do that? Well, I can try to ID them by myself, or I can post the result on internet asking other people to help and get roasted like all those posts you see on Reddit. A third option would be asking our good friend ChatGPT for an answer. So I decided to do both and compare the result from me and ChatGPT to see which of us can make the right answer. The first bacteria is this slimy pinkish stuff that the AI think is some kind of E. coli. It's very consistent with the test result, but I think it is a bit too watery. So my answer would be Carbacilla. And the answer is uh, rose monas. So none of us got a point. The second one is this white, small round colony, and it's a gram positive cosine. Both AI and me agree it belongs to the genus Staphylococcus, and we both got a point for the correct answer. The third bacteria is a gram negative rod and green to yellow color. And it glows on the UV light, so it's very likely to be Pseudomonas. Well, this one is also a very easy one. So we both got a point for the Pseudomonas as the answer. The fourth one is a bit tricky. It is gram positive, very short rod or cosine, I'm not very sure about this one, and have this small green colony. The AI think is also Pseudomonas, this is why it will be gram negative if it's Pseudomonas. So my pick is the Virodin streptococci to be my answer. And the answer is Microbacterium. Well, I saw my answer is more creative though. So the fifth, also the last one is this reddish color gram positive bacteria, which at first I saw, I find the bacteria I'm looking for, but it's supposed to be a gram negative. So this one must be something else. And the AI think it is a uh, Ceratia. Again, it should not be gram positive if it's a Ceratia. And I don't know why sometimes AI just does that. Maybe because like all the other feature check with the test result. So it's thinking like whatever. Anyway, my pick is Rhodococcus. And the answer is indeed Rhodococcus. So the final score is AI gets two points and I gets three points. Great, I won. But if you look at the process, especially the part uh, which me and the AI both get the wrong answer, you will notice that even we match all the test results, we can still get the wrong answer. Why is that? The reason for this to happen is lack of information. You might think that I have all eight test results, so how can it be a lack of information? Well, the truth is, when it comes to biochemical tests, there's just too much that you can ever do. For example, I test whether the bacteria can ferment sugar by the acid production. The sugar I use in the test are just glucose, lactose, and sucrose. But there are more than 40 different sugar types and more than 90 different carbon sources that you can test with. So, there's just not enough information from those tests I did to let me or anybody else identify those bacteria correctly. So where the correct answer in this video came from? Well, they came from the gene. 
the gene sequence of our bacteria isolate. We use a gene code 16S, in short, of bacteria to help us identify its species. This gene has the signature within its sequence to distinguish at least different genomes of bacteria and sometimes even different species. The method is much easier and cheaper than traditional methods for individual hobbyists like me. Well, of course, there are other methods used in different labs around the world, but I think this one is better for the you know individual. So next time when you find some bacteria, you don't have to go on the internet, ask other people for help, and then get roasted. Sequencing company around the world will be glad to identify for you with some small expense. Like in US, it's probably around like $16. And here, I think it's around like $14. And although I did not find the bacteria I'm looking for, I have other specimens that I can add into my collection. So maybe next time you can find and identify some bacteria to add into your collection as well. See you next time. Bye bye.